In today's video, we're gonna be talking about catching biggins on square bills. No. I'm gonna get it. <gasps> oh. Oh. Quality fish on the old square bill. Get that net, get that net. <laughs> well, that is a beautiful fish right there. Hey, yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to another video. You guys loved the last tip video. You guys actually really tore it up. It seems I'm trying to experiment with, you know, the types of videos that I'm making, whether it's challenges, tip videos, river videos, boat videos, kayak videos. There's a lot of videos. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about square bill crankbaits. I think this is actually a highly recommended video in the comment section. A lot of people have been talking about it. But then again, when I'm out on those ponds, there's not really many areas that, you know, you could throw a square bill because I'm going to tell you why today. So right now I'm going to be showing you guys a few different square bills that we're going to be throwing around today and uh, also a few different colors um, depending on what water clarity you're fishing, whether it's clear water, dirty water, and that whole deal. So let me get a few of these out. So when it comes to picking square bill crankbaits, obviously we are out here on the river today, very dirty water. So I usually stick to about two to three colors and that's really what I go with and that's what I've had my best luck on especially when throwing in super, super dirty water. The river is nasty. Alan Bob, show them real quick. Show them, show them that nasty water. Straight chocolate milk. So what I would be throwing in here, I really like, you know, a chartreuse crankbait with a black back, as you guys can tell right there. Of course, this one has a little bit more detail, but it's got that black back right there and that chartreuse body. That is a killer color. That is actually, we've actually been out here for a little bit and that's what I've been throwing today and I've absolutely killed them on it. Also, this one right here, as you can tell, that's just, you know a red crawl color obviously i'm talking about square bills in this video but dt6 is as well by rapala rapala whatever you guys want to call it um are a killer crankbait i've caught a lot of fish on them they have a color called demon which is actually like a light red and it has a i want to say like a purple back on it that is a killer color um alan bob i said i wasn't going to need you where's this in your bag it's in his bag, but it's like just a natural color, or not natural color, but more of a crawl color just like that. So these are pretty much the two colors I would use in dirty water. Very great. You're just gonna have to see what they want that that day. We've thrown both of them today, and it seems that they really want that chartreuse with the black bag. Moving on to, you know, square bills I would throw in clear water. You're kind of gonna want some more natural colors. So right here, we just have like a standard old sexy shad, as you guys can tell. It's just simple, standard. That is, you know, just a regular color right there. Standard, really natural. Same with this one right here. It's obviously a lot bigger square bill, but this one is, you know, sexy shad with a little bit of chartreuse down the middle. And then you have this one, which is actually called Ghost Minnow. This one's by Strike King, and that is a killer color as well. It's got this more natural on top, chartreuse down the middle, and translucent on the bottom. And then I actually have one more, which is pretty much, you know, black, blackish uh, brown on the top, and then it has more of a translucent body. Those are all four really good colors for like clear water if you guys are gonna be doing that. But in this video, we're in dirty water. We're gonna be messing with the chartreuse black back and also the red crankbait. All right, boys and girls, we got this crankbait right here. Let's go catch some fish. We got the first fish of the day, boys and girls, on the old crankbait. Right off the bat, literally, just only threw a few casts. Continue to hunt for some more. We're gonna throw them in the live wells for some uh, photo purpose later on in the episode. But first, little old bass on the old crankbait. You got him? What? Don't let him spit it. Oh, dude, that's a good one, man. That was a beautiful bass right there on the old crankbait, dude. That's two in a row, crankbait. just easy, quick and easy. It's about that time right now. This tide's going low, dude. It's gonna get good. Got them right on that little DT6 and that little crawl pattern. It's gonna be a good day, man. That little rod, that's the only thing. Oh my God, dude. I don't know, bro. Dude, he hit it before I even cranked it, bro. I was, I thought I was stuck on a rock. Third bass already, boys and girls. It is happening very quick today on that little balsa. Or this is actually cedar. It's not balsa, but still super light. Little um, black, black back, chartreuse body, square bill right here. They're smucking it. Second fish on it. Nothing monstrous, but still a nice little bass. He had it right when I threw up on that rock. All right, everyone. So this is the square bill that I'm actually throwing today. As you guys can tell, it has a chartreuse body, 
with a black back on it. This is a killer, killer square build. But the one thing I didn't talk about when I had the square bills out, there's something a little bit different about this one than your standard square, square bills that you're gonna buy. This one is actually made out of wood. So this is a cedar crankbait. You can also buy some balsam ones. They are gonna be a little bit lighter. As you can tell when I shake it, there's nothing happening because it's wood. It's not like a standard, you know, square build that's gonna have rattles and everything in it. And today is actually really tough. So this is a great, <laughs> a really great bait. It's a little more subtle. It's not gonna be rattling around a lot. That is just killer. If you guys are wondering what line, I'm throwing 15 pound on mine, especially since I'm throwing against all this, you know, brush along the bank. Most of my poles are gonna have 15 pound anyways. Usually that is like my safe spot is 15 pounds. Some people like 17, some people like 12. I like 15, it's right there in the middle. And the reel I'm using is actually a Concept Z by 13 Fishing, and the rod is actually a Muse Black. This is a 7.3 medium heavy. You know, a lot of people, it's all gonna be on personal preference. There's no set on rules. I feel like that's where people kind of mess up. Everybody thinks there's set on rules about fishing. Fish how you want, really. Like, I, I'm giving you guys tips today, but just take some parts of these tips and then apply it to when you're fishing. There's no set on rules for fishing. You know, what type of rod you need to be throwing your bait on. Like I said, medium heavies is usually what I go with. That's my favorite all around rod. baby dude he's a baby he tried to choke it he's too small he's too small sorry bro that, that was the most awkward bite this is a big one god big. Dog, dude dude i'm sorry that that was just the most uncomfortable thing that is not a bad fish. You just saw a two pound. There we go, boys. That is a beautiful bass right there. There is nothing wrong with that one. On a square bill, all the fish today. That is a quality one, especially for the river. I know you guys probably don't know much about here at the Savannah River, but these fish usually aren't too big. I've caught, you know, my PB out here, but it's a certain time of year. A majority of the fish you catch are small, but that is a very quality fish. I love Dude, it's pretty. Oh my God. You had one too? I had one. Dude, they're eating a crankbait today, boys. So we're right here on this bank right now and there's actually a bunch of lay downs right down this bank and this place is going to be a little bit different obviously we're on the savannah river it's tidal water i'm sitting here watching the tide charts whether the tide's low or the tide's high and depending on really where the fish are as you guys are going to tell later in the video we actually found some banks with a lot of a lot of shade on it you know it had a lot of good lay downs it was closer to the mouth rather than way back in some of these we call them lakes but some of the areas were more towards the mouth where we were catching these fish rather than, you know, it pushing off into another cove, just right there at the mouth, rather than in the back. Right here, we're kind of midway. I don't know if you guys can tell back there. If we're at the mouth of, uh, we're not at the mouth. We're kind of more back in this place, fishing this bank right here. The tide's up. So usually when the tide's low, I'm sitting there, you know, fishing towards the mouth and that whole deal. But right now I'm just gonna be fishing more back in it. As you guys can tell, we got a lay down right here in the water. And so really when it comes to fishing these, I kind of break it down, you know, Say I'm on this side of it, I'm gonna sit there and throw parallel with the lay down and bring my crankbait right down the side of it. Um, sometimes I'll throw right off the end of it right here and slow roll that thing. Hit this, hit the lay down at different angles because I know this sounds crazy, but depending on the day, those fish are gonna be positioned on that lay down different. And I know that that just sounds kind of bizarre, you know. Some days you'd sit there and just throw at it, but most days you're gonna to wanna to be running this bait parallel with that and making sure, this is very important, making sure that this bill is down hitting the limbs of that tree. But there's gonna be one catch to this is you're gonna get hung up a lot. But let me teach you a few little ways that if your bait is hitting this tree that you can get it out really easy. So when you're throwing at these trees right here, we had that simple little lay down. You're just gonna be reeling your crankbait. I like to keep it moderately slow. I mean, today's a tough day, so I'm gonna be reeling it slow anyways. I'm simply dragging this crankbait next to that tree, next to that lay down. Is it rolling? There's a pickerel in it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Adam. What in the world, dude? You got me excited. Dude, I got excited. <laughs> Saw my line running, I was like, oh shoot, I actually got one, next thing you know. Show them what square bill you're throwing too. This is a crankbait that I'm throwing. Chartreuse black back. It's got some crazy patterns on it, but really it doesn't matter too much to the fish as long as it's got the right colors. Well, while I'm sitting here trying to film this old Adam, Adam caught one. 
right there up front. So what I was wanting to talk about is obviously keeping this crankbait on that tree as much as possible. That is just like if you're fishing a riprap wall or some rock with this crankbait, you're wanting to keep contact with that bottom and really make sure you're hitting that. That's very important with the square bill is make sure you're hitting your target. So when I'm throwing next to these laydowns, when I'm reeling it, you're gonna be feeling that tree. And it can be dangerous because you're throwing, I mean, you're throwing treble hooks. <laughs> so it can really snag that really easy. So what I pretty much use to, you know, minimize me getting hung up, because I don't believe I've really got hung up too much today, is pretty much when I'm reeling that bait past that tree. And when I feel that tree, I'm making sure I'm reeling pretty slow. I'm not really reeling down in that. I'm re reeling pretty, pretty slow. So it's just slightly creeping, you know, over that tree and it's just in there bouncing off. Um, another really key tip, is when you hit that tree, or say you're about to get stuck and you know you're about to get stuck, and you hit that tree and you're reeling pretty slow, if you actually just stop what you're doing and let that bait float to the top, that is a big thing because these square bills actually float. I don't know if you guys know, but the bill, the bill on them is getting the bait down in the water. So when you let go, this bait's gonna float to the top. So if you think you're about to get stuck, you know, you're kind of stuck on there, just let go, and usually most of the time it's gonna float to the top. Our boys and girls just caught this beautiful river bass right there. On that square bill, super thick and fat fish. That is a nice one. I, it was one of the best GoPro clips of the video, and I didn't even have it on. I just guess it just wasn't on, and then it ended up dying when I tried to turn it back on. So beautiful bass right there. He's probably a little over two, but quality fish on the old square bill. Still the old same one. Chartreuse, black back. Freaking killing it, baby. I'm gonna get it. <gasps> oh my god. Oh, dude, get that net. Get that net. Oh my God, where's the big one? <laughs> Dude, that was insane. He ate it like a top water. You know how I was twitching it before? Same way, bro. I just threw it right next to that cypress tree. And when it hit the top, I just went pop, pop. And he went, Whoa. Dude, freaking killer. Bro, that's a solid, what, three? Yeah. Oh, saw easy three. Well, that is a beautiful fish right there. Definitely the best one today. What I've really noticed today on these square bill fish is I believe almost every single fish has came on the square bill but one or on crankbaits in general. And I've caught three on laydowns and the rest were on rock. The three on laydowns have all been quality fish. This one was right next to that cypress tree. I threw up on the edge of it. Adam was stuck and I was about to go get him. And I threw up on the edge. Right when my crankbait hit the top of the water. This is light wood crankbait. I just popped my rod once so it didn't, it just kind of went down in the water and he just literally ate it like a top water. Then you get a beautiful bass like that. The Savannah River, that is quality right there, boys. One thing that is actually very important when uh, fishing this, and, I, and it's one thing I didn't even say, which is really crazy, is obviously the ratio of your reel. Because a lot of people that you know, go crankbait fishing, they're gonna say, you know, you need a five to one, five one to one, and this, 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 and that, this whole deal. I'm using a simple seven one to one gear ratio reel. If I'm needing to slow down my bait, I simply you know, do it in my hand. Because today I haven't really been reeling it super fast, especially out here on the river, because we are going to go fish some rock today. And uh, with that current, I'm really gonna need something to catch up with that fish because you'll lose it. Um, if I had a five one to one gear ratio reel, I promise you I'd lose that fish. But when fishing these laydowns, you know, simply, I just like a seven one to one. Um, it's just really there in the middle or a seven three to one. It's just really right there in the middle. I can slow it down, I can speed it up, whatever I wanna do. All right, everyone, sadly, that is going to conclude this video, but do not leave yet, because I would like to ask just two simple things from you guys. First thing I would like to ask is I understand that usually every single tip video I ask you guys, you know, which one would you like to see next? But sometimes I, I may forget or not see it or that whole deal. So even if you've commented on the other ones, I would still like you to comment which tip video you would like to see next. Leave the comment below and I hope you guys are enjoying these tip videos. It seemed as if you liked the last one and I hope you guys got some value out of this one and learned some more about some crankbait fishing tips slash square bill fishing tips and be sure to let me know in the comment section below. But thank you guys so much for the support. I love you guys so much. This was a very fun day out on the water you know it was a little tough but those fish were just clearly eating a crankbait and it was just overall really fun especially that last fish that blew up on it like a top water i don't know if you guys saw it if you guys didn't see it, make sure you go back and kind of watch that fish come up and eat it it was just crazy that was that whole deal was just awesome but thank you guys so much for the support i love you guys so much and uh be sure to leave a comment below be sure to pepper that thumbs up button if you haven't already if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel i have new uploads three uploads every single week tuesday thursday and sunday some days may vary just due to how busy I am, but be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love you guys so much, and I'll get you guys in the next video.
I got sky like the weatherman, uh I crack cars, get hella bears, uh I got a bra from the motherland, uh I got shooters with hands, uh I get it, get it, uh Anyway, uh Pull up skirt in the hurricane, uh I crack cars, cook every day, uh I get money, uh Every day, uh